This video is on chest X-ray ECG, echocardiogram including transesophageal echo and device closure of atrial septal defect. X-ray chest PA view in atrial septal defect with pulmonary hypertension. The main pulmonary artery is grossly dilated. Right pulmonary artery is also quite enlarged. Right atrial enlargement is seen as a shift of the right heart border to the right of the spine. Pulmonary vascularity is increased and prominent endon vessels are seen. Apex is upwards, suggesting a right ventricular configuration. All features suggest a large second M atrial septal defect with a large left right shunt producing severe pulmonary hypertension. Cardiomegaly on chest x ray is suggestive of atrial septal defect in Eisenmenger syndrome, while it is unlikely in ventricular septal defect and patent ductus arteriosus. Cardiomegaly is mainly due to grossly dilated right atrium in atrial septal defect. The right atrium is not enlarged in the other two varieties of Eisenmenger syndrome. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. ECG shows R as R prime as prime in V1 and crochet touch sign in atrial septal defect. Crochet touch sign in atrial septal defect was described by Heller and Associates in 1996. It is a notch near the apex of the R wave in inferior leads. They noted a sensitivity of about 73% and specificity of 92% if the sign was present in all the three inferior leads. Early disappearance of the crochet touch sign after surgical correction of atrial septal defect was found in 35% of cases even when the incomplete right bundle branch block pattern persists. This ECG also shows right atrial overload as evidenced by P wave amplitude of 3 mm in lead 2. Another ECG in AST which shows inverted P waves in inferior leads 2, 3 and AVF. This pattern indicates that the atrial activation is spreading from below upwards suggestive of low atrial rhythm. Low atrial rhythm can occur with sinus venosus atrial septal defect as the sinus node may be defective so that alternate focus arising in the low atrium gives the dominant rhythm. In addition, there is notching of the QRS complex in lead 2 suggesting crochet touch sign. RSR prime pattern is seen in V1 with a tall R prime reflecting right ventricular hypertrophy. The right ventricular strain pattern that is ST depression and T wave inversion is extensive from V1 to V6. This indicates that the hypertrophied and enlarged right ventricle is occupying the whole of the anterior surface of the heart. RSR prime pattern is seen in 3 and AVF as well. An additional S prime wave in leads 2 and AVF and a notching of the downstroke of the R prime in lead 3 suggested fragmented QRS as per the new terminology. PR interval is prolonged and measures 280 milliseconds. There is additional incomplete right bundle branch block with RSR prime pattern in V1 and a QRS width of 110 milliseconds. This combination of first degree AV block with incomplete right bundle branch block pattern is seen in familial lateral septal defect which is transmitted in an autosomal dominant pattern. This means that 50% of first degree relatives have a chance to have atrial septal defect. Echocardiographic image from subcostal four chamber view showing an ostium secundum atrial septal defect. Subcostal view is the ideal view for imaging atrial septal defect to exclude false echo dropouts which may be seen in apical four chamber view. This is because the imaging ultrasound beam is perpendicular to the septum in subcostal view while it is parallel to the atrial septum in epical four chamber view. This AST has good rims above and below and could be suitable for device closure which has to be finally decided after a transesophageal echocardiogram to assess all rims. Color Doppler flow mapping shows red colored flow across the atrial septum from left atrium to right atrium. The flow is red colored because it is towards the echo transducer in this view. Flow reversal that is blue color jet moving from right atrium to left atrium can occur when there is severe pulmonary hypertension. Transient right to left shunt can occur even without pulmonary hypertension during valsalva maneuver. 
Reverse flow across the atrial septal defect, that is right to left shunt, can also be seen in total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Echocardiogram in epical four chamber view demonstrating a primum atrial septal defect. Primum AST is part of the AV canal defect and is sometimes called a partial AV canal defect. In AV canal defects, the AV septum is absent and both AV walls are at the same level. Primum AST is usually associated with a cleft of the anterior mitral leaflet which appears like an additional commissure in the parasternal short axis view. Cleft AML produces significant mitral regurgitation which is an association of ostium primum AST. A similar defect in the tricuspid valve can cause tricuspid regurgitation. Another association of ostium primum AST is the inlet or canal ventricular septal defect. Color Doppler echocardiogram showing left to right shunt in ostium primum AST. This frame with color flow mapping demonstrates the left to right shunt across the primum AST. Though the actual direction of shunt is perpendicular to the direction of the beam, most of the blood moves from left atrium across AST towards the tricuspid valve in a direction which is parallel to the beam and towards the transducer. That is why the flow is encoded red. Transesophageal echocardiogram is useful in the evaluation of ASD to assess the finer details while deciding on device closure. It is also useful in delineating ASDs which are not visible by transthoracic echo either due to poor echo window or due to odd location of the ASD as in sinus venosus ASD. Transesophageal echo is often used in this context while evaluating pulmonary hypertension of obscure etiology in an adult. Transesophageal echo probe being very near the heart without any intervening lung tissue can give excellent images. Moreover, the short distance permits the use of higher frequency transducers with better image resolution. Usually, higher frequency transducers cannot be used for transthoracic echo because of poor depth of ultrasound penetration at higher frequencies in an adult. This transesophageal echo image shows dual atrial septal defects with a small intervening segment of atrial septum. One defect measures 17.5 mm while the other one measures 15.6 mm. The total will be 33.1 mm. The rims at both ends also appear deficient so that device closure may not be feasible in this case. Surgical closure will be ideal provided that there are no features of irreversible pulmonary hypertension. Device closure of ASD is suitable for secondum atrial septal defect with a good rim all around for holding the disc together. Transesophageal echo is done to assess the superior aortic and mitral rims as well as the total septal length. It is ideal to have TEE guidance during procedure as well. This is the fluoroscopic image of an ASD device being delivered using a delivery cable introduced through a femoral sheath. Once the device reaches the left atrium, the left atrial disc of the device is released first and brought in contact with the left atrial side of the AST. When the position is just ideal, the right atrial disc is allowed to form by withdrawal of the sheath. Once the two discs are in position with the waist across the AST, slight wiggling is done to make sure that the device is perfectly fitting and has no tendency for dislodgement. Position is confirmed by transesophageal echo with special care to see that the device does not interfere with the functioning of the atrioventricular walls. Once everything is fine, the device is released by unscrewing the delivery cable. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.